Jesus of God. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, in a modern society, there are three different ways of understanding what this witness would mean. The first one, witness to a signature on a will or a document. Second one, witness to a major crime or a major event. The third one is a religious sense which makes us understand the one who testifies to the truth what he or she holds. And among all, all these three types of witnesses, what can be more applicable to all of us as Christians is this religious sense of witness. Testifying to the truth to what we hold as. And this witnessing aspect requires commitment, conviction and courage. And we know witnesses act as mediums to people of God and to one another in the world. Today, this witnessing value requires from each one of us as Christians, as children of God. The liturgy of the word invites each one of us to understand what this witness would mean and how we have to bear witness to God in the midst of the lives as we live as God's people. Therefore, I would like to share with you three points of reflection. The first point of reflection, a call to be courageous witness. Pope Francis very beautifully says, the path of Christian courage is the grace given by the Holy Spirit. Yes, today we need courageous witnesses who can stand firm for truth, values of justice, and righteousness. The world lacks it. The church too lacks it. And therefore, we are called to have courageous witnesses in our world and in the Catholic Church. And that's what perhaps we see in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wherein the Apostles were all chained or put in prison, yet they come out of themselves to proclaim boldly about what they have seen, heard, and experienced Christ. And moreover, we hear the apostle saying, we do not obey human beings or men, rather God. Such is the bold proclamation of the apostles we see in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Today, we are also called to have that boldness, wherein the unstoppable, the indomitable courage that we have to have to proclaim the gospel of Christ. We for sure, when we are courageous enough to proclaim the gospel of Christ, the good news of Jesus, God gives us the grace to overcome all the failures and difficulties of life. The power of the risen Lord and the power of the Spirit is given to those who proclaim the gospel of Christ boldly and gladly. Today let's pray that we become courageous witnesses of the good news that has been preached to us in and through Jesus Christ. The second point of reflection, true witnesses of the truth. My dear brothers and sisters, Pope Francis very beautifully says, what is the truth or what work of our truth manifests? Our words are choices. And he furthermore asks us, every one of us need to ask ourselves, Am I a witness to the truth or am I just a liar in disguise as a genuine person? And moreover, Pope reminds of us wherein Pontius Pilate asks Jesus what is truth and Jesus gives the testimony. That is, the truth is this. Jesus, by suffering and death, overcomes and gives us a redemption. And therefore, we see the truth is that Jesus is the king of the world and the universe and we need to acknowledge and accept it. And that's what we see in the second reading from the book of Revelation. Wherein, in a vision, we see the angels and saints proclaim the greatness and the wonders of God, the praise, majesty and the glory of God. 
singing symphonies and the chorus in the heavenly and kingly court. And that brings us to awareness that Jesus is the king who is enthroned. And when we accept Jesus as the king, that is the life witness that we give to ourselves and one another in the world. Today, we are called to ask ourselves, do I bear witness to the truth that Jesus is Lord and God, that Jesus is king of the world and the universe? When we acknowledge Jesus as king, then we can be for sure that we are true witnesses. Today, we are called to become true witnesses to the truth manifested by Jesus Christ. And the truth is this, the marvelous manifestation of God's face and the boundless love of God. We are called to bear witness to this boundless love of God. Let's pray that we become genuine and true witnesses of the truth in the world. The third point of reflection are loving witnesses to the world. My dear brothers and sisters, today what is most important for all of us is this love. In one way or the other, we can take this aspect of love as a loving witness to the world. Pope Francis very beautifully says, witnesses do not lose themselves in words, rather they bear fruit. Witnesses do not demonstrate God, rather they show God in and through the life examples. And moreover, witnesses do not complain others or the world, rather they start with themselves. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, today we do not need to proclaim merely, rather we have to proclaim God or the goodness of God in and through Jesus Christ by life examples that we live and lead. And that's what we see in the Gospel reading, wherein Jesus makes Peter understand that it is not mere words of proclamation will lead us to a loving witness, rather by life examples. Therefore, Jesus asked three times Peter, who denied Jesus three times that he did not know Jesus, do you love me? And there Jesus gives a primary responsibility and the prime task of taking care of the church. Very emphatically, Jesus tells Peter, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and take care of my sheep. And in this we see the responsibility of Peter that lies behind. Jesus gives him a greater and larger responsibility of taking care of the sheep and tending the lambs. And we have to ask ourselves, who are these lambs and sheep? We, the followers of Jesus, are the lambs and the sheep. We are all aware that there are many lambs and sheep who are out of the sheepfold or the gate of Jesus. And therefore, Jesus gives Peter this responsibility of bringing the lambs and sheep to the sheepfold of Christ. Today, there are many lambs and sheep who are ignored, lost, stolen. But Jesus makes us all aware that we have to get back the sheepfold of Christ. In what way can we get them back? It is by a loving witness of loving one another. So let's pray that this love which has a prime task in this world can also bring back each one to God. Let this love be a source of a welcome attitude to move towards God. Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, today being and becoming a witness is a difficult task, but nothing is impossible as long as the power of God is within us the risen power and the risen Christ's power and the spirit of God in us, it can create in us lots of values, it can create lots of rooms for becoming and being a witness. Yes, today we are called to be courageous witnesses to proclaim the gospel of Christ in all authenticity and sincerity. Today we are called to be witnesses to the truth that Jesus testifies. Today, we are called to be loving witnesses to the love that Jesus showed us on the cross and in and through the resurrection, giving us hope and grace. Therefore, let's pray for this grace, that we become a courageous witness 
that we become a true witness and that we become a loving witness for all these graces that seek upon the blessing of the Almighty God.